Hey guys, and welcome to Amazing Videos! And today I'm going to be reading Chapter 14 of Schooled by Gordon Corman. Chapter 14. Name, Capricorn Anderson. It was true that I now knew 129 people, but in a school of 1,100, that hardly made a dent. Rain always said, don't give up and don't give in. Of course, she was talking about civil rights or protesting a war or something, but I was sure it counted for this too. The good news was that more students were coming up to me, which was a chance for me to ask their names. Usually they wanted to talk about the time I drove Mr. Rodrigo to the hospital. I was amazed that people seemed less interested in Mr. Rodrigo's recovery than the details of how he got to the emergency room. Rain explained it to me the last time I spoke to her on the phone. That's society for you, Cap. Following rules is more important than saving your lives. The law says you can't drive until you're 16, so if somebody does it, it's a huge deal. You should feel sorry for these poor kids. They're prisoners, and they don't even know it. That explains why Sophie is so obsessed with getting her license, I concluded. Exactly. What's a license? A piece of paper. That's the real story, Cap that we've allowed ourselves to be enslaved by our own laws. She was so sensible. I wish I could have talked to her 20 times a day. It was almost like I was piloting a ship through a binding fog and Rain was an experienced captain. I wished I, would, I could have asked her how to play every wave, but it, was, it just wasn't possible. Are you feeling better? When can we both go home? Soon, Cap, she promised, and in the meantime, you stay true to yourself. Don't change because everybody around you is spiritually handicapped. I don't know this Sophie girl, but her mother, Flora Mundy, well, let's say that she wasn't one of Garland's bigger successes. They say the apple never falls far from the tree, you know. Rain, I reminded her gently, that sounds like a negativity trip. Rain taught me that when people are negative, they're trying to put duct tape on their own damaged souls. And while we were all for using duct tape on a drain pipe or a fender, it could never hold together something as important as a soul. You're right, she admitted with a sigh. It's hard to stay positive when you're surrounded by psychic zombies. I find myself slipping back to the dark ages before Garland. Yesterday, I made a hand gesture to one of the so-called doctors. Let's just hope it was muscle memory from my tra taxi driving career. It made me feel weird to hear Rain speaking ill about Sophie without even meeting her. Of course, I was partly to blame for that. I told Rain some of the mean stuff Sophie had done and said. I'd had to tell her the good about Sophie, but it was hard to nail down. Like when Sophie smiled, just for that instant, there was almost no such thing as sadness. Would Rain ever understand that? I wasn't sure I did myself. Everything about Sophie had a kind of shine to it. After years of studying art with Rain, I still couldn't remember a color as intense as the glitter polish Sophie painted on her toenails. Even her shelf in the bathroom was a wondrous sight. A skyline of bottles, tubes, and jars of all shapes and hues. And the names, Passion Fruit Heel Softener with Volcanic Pumice, Bird of Paradise Exophalating Scrub, Honey Infused Moisturizing Lotion with Lang Lang. I used her pomegranate shampoo with gigavomitizing power once, but when I looked in the mirror, I couldn't believe my eyes. My hair was standing up in all directions, a huge spear of blonde fuzz surrounded by a giant halo. I tried brushing it down, but all it did was cackle and stand even stiffer. Somehow this gigavolumizing power fills your hair with static electricity if you just stuck your finger in a light socket. To make matters worse, there was urgent pounding, and Sophie snarled, Get out of there! You're hogging the bathroom! When I opened the door, she stumbled back three steps and gawked at me. I've heard of bad hair days, but wow, you are you look like your head exploded. I tried your shampoo. She was disgusted. If you're going to use the gigavomalizer, you're, you've got to use the conditioner that comes with it. Otherwise, you might as well be pumping 10,000 volts through your hair. I must have, been, I must have looked completely helpless because she took pity on me. 
She grabbed a bottle, marched me to the kitchen, and shoved my head in the sink. As she wet me down with the vegetable sprayer, I could feel my hair collapsing from its platinoid shape. When was your last haircut? Sophie marveled. I've never had one, I replied. Never? Well, there was the time I whacked my head on the pump handle for our well. Doc Cafferty shaved part of my scalp so she could put in stitches. She poured on some sweet-smelling stuff and started to massage it in. Who's he, your pediatrician? No, the vet. The massaging hands froze. Do me a favor, she said, finally. What you just told me, never repeat that to anybody. Especially if they have child services on their name tag. My hair was fine after that, and I never again used anything from Sophie's beautiful bathroom shelf. But it wasn't because she said I couldn't. She even gave me some advice about cream for oily skin. I never touched it, though. I knew when I'm playing, I know when I'm playing with fire. I think she was in a better mood because her father was in town and her driving lessons were going well. Mr. Dinelli was a really nice person, although whenever he was around, his ex-wife wife looked pain and squinty like she was trying to read something off a sign that was very far away. Mrs. Mr. Dinelli even took the time to teach me some of the kendo positions. I couldn't wait to show them to Rain when he, we got back home. Another reason more people were speaking to me at school was this Halloween dance. Luckily, there was a tr chant dance on trigonometry and tears, so I sort of knew what to expect. It looked a lot like Rain's description of riots back in the 60s. Hundreds of people crammed belly to belly, waving their fists and shouting. I couldn't figure out why anyone would want to do that for fun, but they did. It was all they talked about. I don't know what kind of food to get for the dance, I said, at least for the tenth time. I didn't even know people ate, a da ate at a dance. I thought they danced. Yeah, but you need snacks and drinks and desserts, said Holly Van Arden, number 130th. My neighbor goes to St. Andrews, and at, at that last prom, they had create your own pizza. He designed the pie, tossed the dough, add the toppings, and it cooks while you're dancing. People are raving about it. Well, I think we should have, we should have that. Uh, go ahead and set it up. It's not cheap. We have to bring in these giant ovens on wheels. I told her what Rain told me when I asked what would happen if we weren't able to afford our monthly trips for supplies. When you spend your life worrying about money, pretty soon money becomes your life. Cool, she exclaimed, and she took on the job. In the identical way, people volunteered to handle drinks, desserts, posters, and decorations. The next morning when I arrived at school to do my Tai Chi... Holly Van Arden asked if she could join me. Naomi was already waiting for us. That's chapter 14, guys, and see you tomorrow for chapter 15 on Amazing!